McLaughlin. I'm head of keyboard at Cheatham School of Music, chair of the European Piano Teachers Association, and also teacher at the Royal Northern College of Music. The first thing that struck me when I saw this instrument was how handsome it was. It feels as though you're seated at a concert grand piano. The action itself feels wonderfully um, firm, but it, it feels like a really expensive, wonderful, sympathetic concert beast. What is really surprising is the pedals. The fact that I can do more or less everything that I normally do on a concert grand piano on this avant-grand. I mean, using all three pedals at the same time, like the beginning of a Debussy study, Pour les Agrimons. Um, at the very beginning, I would I'd take that in the middle pedal, swivel this round and use the soft pedal, and then use the loud pedal. Also, what's interesting is um, reproducing effects that you can get on a 40 piano, a historic instrument that Beethoven or Mozart would have known. Quite often, they write 40 piano on one chord, but on a grand piano, certain pianists try to get that effect by fluttering the pedal and lifting and dropping the hands on the same chord. Like On an upright or on a clavinova or a, an, another digital piano, you would just be stuck on 40. I think the acid test of any piano with regard to sound uh, and the bass is the opening of Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. an incredible sound. We have these chords getting louder and we have this thing, F being reiterated over and over again. Likewise, we have to try the extreme high register. Very impressive sound and it, it makes you work your fingers. It, it's not making you lazy either. For my taste, the most important thing of all about the piano is the ability to float tone. Usually, with an upright piano, the sound will die much quicker. On this instrument, it's much easier to actually make the notes last longer and to continue the sound of reverberation. So it's very useful as a sort of educational tool, I think. sort of sound carrying through is very important when you're trying to develop a rich tone in students and when you're trying to get them to learn to connect notes in a long phrase rather than playing individual notes like stones being thrown. I think what's really wonderful is the subtleties. It's not just a case of loud and soft. It's possible to get all kinds of different dynamics. It's possible to bring out melodic lines. So whether you're doing, bring out the top, it's easy to bring out the bass, or perhaps the middle. We've got a very busy, crazy house in that, that we have four children who are all serious pianists and they all do exams and festivals and concerts and competitions. So we're all fighting for the piano, but it is very helpful uh, to have an avant-grande as well as a conventional grand, as well as a clavadova in the house. And it's very useful to have somebody who can play with headphones to avoid the, the cacophony that will ensue in a normal detached house. I think it's important to realise that the avant-grande is not a better upright piano and it's not a grand piano, it's got its own personality.
I think the fact that it's got so many uses in the home with regard to education being perfect in conservatoires, the fact that it can train students who can't afford to buy a grand piano, I think it's got its own identity and I think that many people across the spectrum, performers, students, teachers, institutions, will find it very special for many different uses.